Okay, we can cut out one of last time. So we design design the the network. Okay. So right, we already talk about the first step, and right now we talk about the second step. And for the second step, the first of all, we need to collect the data and do the labeling. Suppose we do the supervised learning, so we need to do the labeling here. Collect data, do the labeling, and if the data is not enough. And that in the, our homework, we already provide you on the home. Oh, I just did the homework. Remember, remember to download a new homework. Oh, sorry, we modify the homework. So we, right now it's version, version three. It's version three. All right, version three. Okay. Hmm? And this one. I they for, they forget to the previous one. Oh sorry, the long one. I, I do a long one. So Okay, this is version eight, version one, beta eight, and we provide you this one, this one for augmented data. Okay, so we provide you those function for augment augmentation data augmentation. Okay, so you can use this one. Those function. So you can reference those functions and try to do the data augmentation. So you, if your data is not, good, not enough, you can do this one. So today we will try to talk about the, the mini batch and batch normalization. So last time we talked about this one. So we assume we have a 800, 800 training data, right? So each we divided by five mini page. Okay, let's not talk about this one. But my, my, my experience from the students, probably for each mini page, the 100 probably is too many. You will take a 20, 30, 40, so it's okay. 100 is too many. Okay. So in this case, suppose total I have a 500. And then for each one, suppose the 100. So I have a five mini batches. Uh, divided by five, so five mini batches. So we have five mini batches here. So the first of all, I would like to define the epoch. Uh, define the epoch. What's epoch? Epoch is meaning suppose I have a five, 500 total 500 training data in each mini batch, about 100 uh, images. So we have, we can divide it by five. So we have five mini batch. So if you run go along one run of the over five mini batch, we call one epoch. So one epoch meaning you go through all the training data. Okay. But for each mini batch, we call one iteration. One iteration. So in this case, we have a five iteration. And so after five iteration, we have a one epoch. And in the real experience, 
it experience each epoch is better has more iteration so that's why i tell you okay if you have a 100 image to be one mini batch but one epoch you only have a five iteration that's not good it's not good it's better for example if you have a 20 each each mini batch with 20 images so you, you total have a 25 iteration right total you have 25 iteration here and become one epoch or less better the other thing is that for each iteration you update your parameter one time okay for each iteration you will update your parameter one time and so this two in your homework both figures are important so first one is uh see this is your epoch and this is your accuracy so we hope we hope after several epoch our accuracy will be high but not only this is important The other is your loss function. We hope, we hope after several epoch, your loss will be reduced close to the actual zero. Okay, but sometimes it's not zero because if you, this, you are mean square error, it's hard to judge <clears throat> what's the minimum value because mean square error they don't have a range. So it's hard to judge, okay? But the lower is better. So you need to compare both, you need to, based on both, sorry, based on both figures. And you will understand when to stop your epoch in order not to overdo the overfitting problems. Some, because many of you will, I mean, many of the situation is overfitting. So for example, if in this situation, probably around five or between five and ten, you should stop. Stop, stop the, the, the epoch because this one will cause overfitting. So we are doing this overfitting. 没有其他图可以让你表示就这两个那通常你大概已经掉下来没有在动了然后这个是精确度已经到了就准备要停止了不然你会产生 so both, both figures will affected by the mini batch size by the learning rate so your mini batch size will affect your result. Okay. And then you, your learning rate will also affect your result. Okay. So because of a mini batch, I mean, we will introduce batch normalization this time. So after, um, I think I, I forget which year. Okay. So the original VGG. 16 or VGG 19, they don't use batch normalization. Okay, because at that time they don't care. The second is because it's not deep enough. So if not deep enough, sometimes you don't need a batch normalization. Okay. But assume you are deep enough, so we do the batch normalization. So right now, most of case, almost all the case, we do convolution batch normalization and activation function. So both three will be one, one layer, okay? So each layer has convolution, batch normalization and activation function together. In some case, they do convolution, activation function, and then batch normalization. So most of, I think my experience is 90% people do this order. However, in some case, they don't, they do not do this order and they claim they are better, they have a better result. 
啊，所以不一定要这三个 order 哦，但是我说百分之九十我看到了都是用这三个 order 来做这样子，就这个先做这三个，但不一定哦。而且有些人不做这样是是说结果更好哦。Why we need to the batch innovation? First of all, your influence time will speed up, will be fast. 速度会增快。为什么？因为增帮助你收敛快。啊，这这有写哈。Because of normalization convert the range of input value to a normal range. 第二个是。避免 overfit, prevent, prevent, and prevention of overfitting, because you normalize back to the the zero and one. Okay, and you also uh, and the solution of gradient vanish, be means the vanish would be so speed increase. You solve the overfitting problem. You solve the vanish problems because we do back. We do back propagation and gradient descent. This is based on gradient descent. Gradient descent, they do the directive, directive again, again, again. It's wave fun. That wave fun 到最后会变成没有值零零零出现了 ，except for the very deep. Ah, so it will cause the vanish problems because the directive again and again and again for the um uh, uh, gradient descent problems. Okay. So what's the batch normalization? So this traditional method, okay. Traditional is that your previous previous output after you do the uh, the the network the connection of a filter. This filter you got the output and you do activation function. Uh, do uh, sorry, do the normalization as your acti like activation function. And got the output. So final output is A. This is convolution filter, right? You do filter, you do activation function, and got the result. This one, because you do we do the batch, so the calculation become this one. So the batch, output batch. Okay. So this original, original process, okay, without batch normalization. So this only convolution. Activation function. That's a VGG sixteen. Do this way. So we do batch normalization is this way. After convolution, we do batch normalization. So it's easy. Based on each batch, you try to find the mean value. You try to find the the standard deviation. So your your equation become this one. So this is a batch normalization. This this one, for each batch, see for sorry for in each mini 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 batch for each one, okay. You try to find the average value. You try to find the standard deviation. And so based on this one, so based on equation this one, so this original the after convolution you output and. After batch normalization, you output to here. So this new z value, this one, is batch normalization. Based on the Gaussian distribution, you minus mean to the standard deviation. So you normalize back to the zero and one. Because each time you do derivative, the value because your value between zero and one. So after you do the derivative and times together, the value becomes small and small, small, smaller. Will become vanish. That's not good. So we want to normalize back to the zero and one. So this batch normalization is this one. Okay. And later people feel okay. This is not good enough. So they add one more turn here. So they do normalization. Also do the gain and shift. So do this one again to zoom to large, larger, larger the value. So that's meaning you got a new value z, and you do the scaling. Suppose two, two times, so your value become two times large, and you also do some shift. Actually, shift is b the parameter b on the the parameter b. So you do some shift, 
and become the new value here. So batch normalization actually right now include this both two steps. The first step, you normalize become zero and one. The second, you enlarge this one based on gamma. Uh, this alpha, beta is UV and then gamma and beta through the zoom, zoom in. Okay. But when you are gamma equal to your standard deviation, you will shift become equal to your U. And you, this one, you back to the original Z. Okay. If your gamma equal to your standard deviation, your beta equal to U, and this will become original value. Okay. But we don't do that. You may we don't do that because uh, we just process this one. You, you just recover back to here. It's just uh, useless. Okay. So we do normalization and we do enlarge this one. So both together is a batch normalization. Okay, so right now, the other situation, you'll be very careful. If your batch normal, batch size is only one, is that correct? That's a problem. Or your batch size is only two or three. That's meaning here, so you, if your batch size is too small, they will cause problems here. Okay, so if your batch size is too big, your batch size is too big, and then your it, the number of iteration will be not enough. I mean, your if your batch size is too big, like a, I said, we have a five hundred total five hundred training data. Each major batch is one hundred, so your iteration only five times. It's too very big. So when your batch size is too big, your iterations time will be small. That's not good because we use we use gradient descent. Gradient descent method is a is an iteration approach, approach, approach. So if your iteration times not 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 enough, that's not good to use gradient descent. The other way is that. If your batch size is too small, especially sometimes you only use one, especially for three D process. Sometimes three D process because your GPU, uh, sorry, your uh, your GPU, your memory is uh, small, so you only use batch size only one. That's not good because if you only use one, you cannot find a mean value, you cannot find a standard deviation, so batch normalization becomes useless. Two is not enough. So my suggestion, at least five. Okay, at least five. So it's about five to, to uh, I think 40 is fine. But I, I think my, my student, I'm not sure about my students, most of them, they use like a, around 15 to 40, around 15 to 40. So without sisters on here. Why is it here? Because we want to average by one to standard deviation. Oh, okay. So this this one they say batch normalization cannot be applied no, to in to apply to small batch. Okay. Oh, we continue. So here is just say if the scaling is become bigger, it's fine because your data. So the scale is fine, just let you know. And in page 92, they talk about, but I'm not sure this one, I'm not sure because I do not write a code and student write a code. They tell you, batch normalization only apply to training. Influence they don't use. But you don't need to care about that one because uh, um, the PyTorch or like uh, TensorFlow, I think automatically process this one for you, okay? so. Batch knowledge is for training, not for inference. They tell me about this one, but I'm not sure about this one. Okay, so that's meaning you they don't affect your your running time for inference. And this is some the other the other method for the scale like scaling here. That's just for your reference. 
is for also for your reference. Here is here what they try to tell you is that there's an idea. The idea is meaning they don't do that. Okay, idea is they put the entire the whole training data to be one page. But actually, that is not good. That's a machine learning method to this way because machine learning they don't need the big data. Machine learning they don't need the big data, so they put all the training data together at once, and they don't use gradient descent. They use the Levinberg that but in uh deep learning they have a they need they have a lot of parameters so they need big data they use gradient descent so they need to a lot of iteration so they need mini page okay so that you know so in practical solution okay they try to use a page to find the average value okay oh, so this is just the same this is the same thing they try to find mean standard deviation. And this is a, a normalization and this is a scaling. Okay. In here, this is the other tutorial that you know why batch normalization is important. Okay, so let's tell you is this way. Original di distribution is this one. This one. So if you don't do batch normalization. It's easy after you do the process, especially for activation function. This is batch normalization. This is activation function. So if you do not do batch normalization, this original your data because of the activation function. So activation is try to push the value to one and the zero or one it's schemoid schemoid or tension edge they push try to push to the to both sides so your result will become this one after if you don't do batch normalization okay you do the um convolution your result will be this one and after you do activation function finally your result become this one because the activation function push your value toward one or zero or one to minus one so your value become two end that's no good okay because you don't you lose information between so patch notion is this way they because they use gaussian model so they, that this distribution, original distribution, try to push them together, become the Gaussian model here. So this one. Batch normalization is that you, after your convolution result, they try to let your result, this distribution, become the normal distribution, this Gaussian distribution here. So based on the Gaussian distribution, there will be easy, they, they will be matched to your activation function. So your after batch function, your, your data become here, and then you can do activation function. And after you do activation, sorry, you do batch normalization, sorry. Right? And it's easy for you to do the activation function because they match this one. So if you do batch you lose information here. Okay, so it's better to do this one. However, some paper say we need to do activation function first and do batch normalization. They have the other claim because they feel this is not good. And this is better. But the other paper talk about that one. That's okay. It doesn't mean that's not good, but I forget. Those paper talk about some their issue, I forget. Okay. So this is the same. The same. If you do the batch normalization, okay, 
and you first iteration to this one, second become this one. However, if you don't without batch notion, your value after activation function will go on the two end. So the value will become this one. But if your is not good, actually this is not good because this distribution, you lose the information here. Okay? So let's try to let you know the batch notion is important. Here we try to tell you what's the internal covariance shift. What is this one? Internal covariance shift. What is this one? This one is meaning usually we assume our sample is the IID. We assume our sample is IID. It's meaning it's meaning each sample is in, independent to read the uh, identical distribution. This means make a simple domain no correlation, correlation. If you have correlation, it's not easy to distinguish. distinguish. For example, it's twins. Both objects twins, the, the similar, similar things, it, it's not easy to do classification. So they assume or they are independent. Okay, but actually, not this. That one is not important. The important thing is, uh, okay, what kind of situation will become in the in internal covariance shift? That's meaning here. Here they, they tell tell you. So in each layer, in each layer, right? If the distribution is not normalized, different distribution. Okay, and your process result will be incorrect because because back propagation is here. Okay, this one. This one tell you what we talk about back propagation in page seventeen. It's meaning each input, right? After layer and output, and this output will become the second, the input of second layer and output. So input after convolution, output and input convolution, output. Based on this one, and then we become, actually based on this one, right? We become, we organize, we organize become this one. And this back propagation, we talk about this one. And what's this one meaning? This one meaning from the back here, you only can see is a, this their L, the L turn, their L, they only can see the previous input and my output. They only can see the, your previous input, previous, the input of previous, the output previous there become my input. So you or you can see the previous one, and then my output. So for each layer, you only can see is your input information and the output. So based on this one, here try to tell you is uh, if your previous previous layer the distribution is unknown. After you process and your output probably will become not good. So if your previous layer is already normalized using Gaussian model to normalize because you divide it by you divide it by um, the mean extent mean standard deviation and the shift by mean value, that's Gaussian model. So that's meaning each layer is a Gaussian model. You know the Gaussian model. So all my process, even though the activation function, sorry, I will think about okay, my input is a Gaussian model. So your activation function can assume my original distribution is a Gaussian model. So the activation function I can choose is good for the Gaussian model. 
啊，这注意一下哈，就是你的每一层只看到前面那一个层的输出嘛。那你前面那层是什么 distribution， 你如果没办法控制的话，那你都用高需 model 来 model 它，就有时候会错。因为像这些 distribution 都跟高这种 activation 方式都跟高群有关，就是零到一嘛，然后资料是越靠近零越集中嘛，你懂意思吗 ？What I mean this activation function function why is it good for Gaussian model is because they will be twin zero and one or minus one and one, right? And there the distribution here, here after some region. Will be become zero. So this this activation function is good for the Gaussian model because of this reason. So here they try to tell you is、uh, you are better do the batch normalization. So your input information will become the, based on the Gaussian model, and my activation function is based on the Gaussian model. So any of the entire layer. Everybody based on the Gaussian model, and our classes will be consist. Okay, so here they tell you, right? This, this here, ah, every one only see the front part of the output, right? Ah, so you want to show the output part. The output part will tell you, oh, right, here. So you want to make sure that the output is consistent, right? Ah, so you want to make sure that the output is consistent, right? Ah, so you want to make sure that the output is consistent, right? And univalence 嘛，那这样我们每个人都一致的话，那我就可以一样的用这个这种 activation function 来处理这样子啊，所以 activate the choose for activation function is important， and they probably they assume your input is a Gaussian distribution， 这个这个、注意一下这个好，那一样 why we need a batch normalization， the other reason is the scale， 就是 this one。The unit for each direction. Suppose this is the parameter w1 and w2. Okay, if both the unit are different, suppose like here, this unit is one, two, three, four. This unit is one hundred, two hundred, three hundred. Be careful. So sometimes, right now, okay, right now our multiple input we use R G B. It's okay. We use this, this information. We normalize to zero to two two fifty five. It's okay. So important thing is your original data, the input should be careful careful about the unit. Okay. So there many deep learning, the input raw data, original data, they will not do the normalization process. This is important. Ah, so. 这里会有个问题了。你的输入 ，suppose your input here is gray value. The other input, suppose, ah,、uh, suppose, is something like a measurement, like a like like a vibration or something signal. For example, if this input is a image, this input is a voice. Can you do that? Yes. Do you need to do the normalization before input? Yes, because your unit difference, your unit difference will cause the gradient descent problems because in the x direction and y direction the unit difference. So suppose your distribution like this way, 这是你分布哦，那你发现它会往 gradient descent 高的地方先降 because this direct two direction, okay, the unit difference. So in the W two direction, they have a bigger slope. In the W one direction, they have a bit, this direction, a small slope. And when you do the gradient descent, they are easy to go along the bigger slope first, and then go the the the, the slow slope second. They don't do this way. Your goal is here. Your local maximum is here. The initial position is here. So they'll go along the bigger slope and go along the slow slope. So this is no good. So why? That's why we need to do the data normalization, the unit normalization, because we want the distribution in for any parameters. 
are the same unit. In this direction, your gradient descent will be easy to go, go along one direction and reach the global minima. So the same is here. Sometimes if you do this way and you find your iteration, this iteration will become the trigger. <笑>我从来没看到这么完美<笑> 這才是真的data。那為什麼會這樣震動? 因為不是名義經驗不足他看起來哦你很安全你會發現你的曲線是這樣震動的 this, this, this is normal <笑> and this is perfect OK 所以, 所以你常會看到這個東西 OK 那最後提到一下, so normalization how many count normalization we, so this is a WH so this is suppose this is a W times H is this direction this is channel number official map this is mini batch size. So if you do batch normalization, meaning based on entire batch, you do normalization. Okay. Layer normalization is meaning batch for each layer. Suppose you have a 32 feature map. Based on 32 feature map, you do normalization. We call layer normalization. We also have an instant normalization is that each individual feature map can do normalization, okay? And we also have a group, based on several individual, you do the group group normalization. All the normalization, which one is better, depends, depend on your situation to use. But I just let you know, they have a different kind of normalization. And the purpose, the major purpose is this one. You try to because your direct the parameters direction is not unique, so will cause problems. Will cause your the this analysis analysis is uh, not so beautiful. Just刚刚那个啊，时间到啊，我又找不到了。就是刚刚那个曲线哈，事实上真的没那么漂亮，就这个。它會產這些這些問題有很多問題是因為normalization沒做好,那recall cause problems, but the problem is uh, which normalization is better? No, it depends. Okay? But I just that you know they have a different kind of normalization, but most famous one is the batch normalization. Okay? So this is a famous one. But sometimes some people use instance normalization. Okay? Okay, so that's a today lecture. I will next week I will continue to talk about the rest of it. We take we are almost almost done. This is the final one is the loss function. So after loss function, we are almost, almost finished this one. Okay. Okay, now now uh, now example here. This example. Okay, so that's it for today lecture. Okay. 
And after this uh, basic uh, deep learning, I was next, 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 um, for next day, I'll talk about uh, the paper for the uh, uh, CNN, the real paper. Uh, I'll talk, the relative talk about the paper. Okay. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you. Paper去解釋哦。那之後我們paper講就跟跟大學部不一樣了哦。那研究所会以paper,后面会以paper为主,这样子,两个开始要拆开,拆开的不一样的,OK,谢谢。好,谢谢,很好,谢谢大家。Okay,